Are you struggling to configure an IPsec VPN tunnel on your Cisco devices because you don't even know where to start? Whether it's secure remote connections or connecting branch offices, this is a must skill for any IT pro to have. So today, I'll guide you through setting up an IPsec VPN tunnel from scratch, including every step and command you're gonna need to succeed. So if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely make sure that you like the video, definitely subscribe to the channel, and also stick around, because by the end, you're gonna be able to have fully achieved a fully functional VPN tunnel and the confidence to troubleshoot any issue that comes your way. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, y'all, as always, before we dive into any lab or into any configuration, we wanna just do a quick overview of the lab setup. So we're just gonna take a minute to do that right now. And so the goal of this lab is to establish a secure tunnel between those two routers that we see using IPsec with AES-256 encryption. So as you can see, we have R1 right there on the left-hand side. And on the opposite end, we have R3. And R1 is our main router, and it's connected to what we're simulating as the ISP. And that's that serial connection that you see there with the squiggly lines. And then R3 is acting as our remote peer. That's our serial connection, and R3 also has a serial connection that's simulating that and we're just trying to communicate over the tunnel. So let's go ahead and jump into this config. All right, y'all, so we're logged into R1 and we're gonna start here just by configuring an ISA camp policy. And that's just a big word, a big speak, and it's just a way to define how these two routers are gonna negotiate these parameters. Now, Haggle, these are, that's just a mnemonic for all the different parameters of the ISACAMP policy. Nothing more than just like the OSI model, you gotta know all people seem to need data processing. This is the same concept. Just remember Haggle, cause that's gonna help you build out the tunnel fast. As you can see, hash would be the H for the mnemonic, and that's gonna set a hash algorithm. As you can see, authentication, that's pre-shared keys. Keep it simple, group. That's the Diffie-Hellman group, that's for the key exchange. Lifetime and encryption. I did use encryption, but I didn't use lifetime. As you can see, you don't have to use all of the parameters to build a successful tunnel. I just did a quick one for a lab just to show you how to build one. And if you use that mnemonic, you can build one really quick too. Um, I've had it in my OneNote, I keep a note on it. here. That's an example you could use hash, but we didn't. So let's move on to the other part now of setting up pre-shared keys. Okay, y'all, up next, let's get this pre-shared key configured. And this key is just gonna allow these devices to authenticate to each other. It'll let them know who's who and what's what basically. So right here, the command is crypto isocamp key. And then for my iOS, I got to specify uh, whether it was encrypted or unencrypted. And then with that number and then the password I'm using is secret or that's going to be the key. So that's the string that I'm using. And then the address that I'm pointing to right here is 102.1.1.1. That's the other end, the opposite end of that ISP link on R1. So if you look at the running config, that's how it looks in the running config. So phase one, if you need to establish that, you need that key and all of those other parameters to match. Let's look at phase two. What do you need to match on that? You see there's the IPsec profile and then you have this transform set. That's gonna be our next thing that we're gonna look at. Phase one, ISACAMP policy, and then phase two, IPsec. All right, now let's define the IPsec transform set. This is for how the data is gonna be determined to be encrypted and authenticated within the tunnel. 
So the command for that is crypto IPsec transform set. And then I name my ninja. Again, it's case sensitive. So you're going to have to remember that. And then ESP AES, that's for the encryption part. And then ESP SHA HMAC is for the hashing part. Again, I'm just showing you in this run of config what it's going to look like when you configure a transform set. But now let's move on to another important piece, which is the IPsec profile. So let's move on to that and I'll show you how to do that next. All right, for this next step, stay with me now because this is configuring the IPsec profile. You could have done this before we did the transform set, but you still just nevertheless need to do it. So you set the transform set here underneath the profile. I named it with the lab, uh, the name lab, and then you set the transform set, which is calling to the transform set command that you did in the running config earlier with our IPsec command. So that's the transform set that we're using underneath that profile. So after you do that, this is where the magic is going to happen because now we're going to move on to configuring the actual tunnel interface. So this is going to be the command breakdown for that. You have interface, you can name your tunnel or have your tunnel numbered anything you want. I got it as tunnel 10. Um, I'm using just a basic class C IP address and scheme here. It's for lab purposes. Then you want to do a tunnel source, which is serial 00, which is pointing to our ISP. And then the tunnel destination is that next hop of the IP address of the tunnel ISP. That's how you build the tunnel. That's how it really works. Now, the tunnel protection IPsec profile lab, that's calling on that IPsec profile. And that's where the data is going to be getting encrypted and that's how it knows how to handle that data hopefully all of that made sense if nothing else make sure you guys notice how we attach that ipsec profile to the tunnel this is going to ensure that all that traffic is going to go through the tunnel encrypted everything is built out let's go ahead and try to verify this configuration all right we're still in router one the last step here we just want to verify the configuration with a couple of show commands um, this is show cry isocamp SA and it's just showing phase one is established QM idle is the state you're looking for then we have for phase two to make sure and confirm that IPsec is active we want to run show cry IPsec SA and as you can see right here we got packets encrypt and decrypt that's showing us that we have two-way communication so that's definitely what we're going to want to look for. The last thing that we want to do is test connectivity of the tunnel. Just a simple ping of the other end of the tunnel, which we had set to dot two. And as you can see, everything is successful there. So we verified everything for our tunnel is up and established and communicating as expected. Here are some quick troubleshooting tips before we do a complete recap of this lab. So as you can see, if you get isocamp stuck in that no state, you just want to verify those policy parameters. And then you just want to verify the packets being encrypted, decrypted with that IPsec command to show crypto IPsec SA and definitely verify the network connectivity. If you're still having traffic issues, definitely run debugs and packet captures on all the equipment that's involved. You did it. You just set up a secure IPsec VPN tunnel from start to finish, but don't stop here. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell if you found any kind of value in this, cause my next video, I'm gonna be going over the top tools to use as a network engineer. That way you can become more comfortable if you get in the real world or just doing your labs and you just want to troubleshoot better and you want to have some more knowledge of these network engineering tools. See y'all on that next video. I'm going to holla at y'all. Peace.